distinguished members of faculty, my dear students, staff members, and everybody who is a part of this assembly. Each of us must feel proud of this day. This day did not come without sacrifices. In the history, whatever viewpoint you project, there will always be a counter viewpoint. Therefore, it is very difficult for us to arrive at any consensus. When I look back at last almost 150 years, the history of India, of course, is very, very long and ancient. But I just pick up 1857 as the starting point. Then we must know how this country has passed through several rounds of struggles, several rounds of uh, massacres, several rounds of uh, sacrifices, and so on. The basic difference between 1857 and 1947, that is 90 years, is that 1857 movement of independence, that is called the first war of independence, the leadership came from the kings, the queens, the princes and princes. Gandhiji's greatest role was to convert a movement led by the rich and fabulous people, people who were enjoying the power, the princely states and so on, into a mass movement. That was the greatest contribution of Mahatma Gandhi. He converted a princely movement of 1857 into a national movement. Gandhiji arrived on the scene in 1915. Please see, that is a very important date. 1915. Every student. Second point I want to make is, please look at the people who were in the lead role for independence of this country. They were highly educated people, starting with Mahatma Gandhi, who himself studied law in England, who practiced law in South Africa, and who was a barrister. The best of clothes, the best of attire, you can see with Mahatma Gandhi. When he came to India, and he found that he has to lead people who have no clothes, he removed his clothes. He threw away his clothes and became like them. So the second lesson is that the leadership of uh, India's independence movement was with highly educated people whether it was Mahatma Gandhi, or it was uh, Pandit Nehru, or it was Sadar Patel, or it was Gopal Krishn Gokhale, or it was Bal Gangadhar Tilak. It was with intelligent people. People who were successful in their own ways, people who did not look at politics as a full-time job, they were doing something else. Somebody was a medicine doctor, somebody was a lawyer, somebody was a teacher, somebody was an agricultural pharmacist, and so on and so forth. Third thing that comes to my mind is that uh, the political class at that time was not looking for any immediate gain. Actually, they were to make sacrifices. Sacrifices in the form of losing their personal property, their personal status, 
their personal standing in the society and so on so friends to think that this flag is flying high only because of handful of people is not true it was a mass movement steered by the best of the minds india could produce and today those minds are uh, worshiped around the world that means they were global minds they were very very inspired minds that was the kind of leadership you are students of a business school if you want to listen to the debates on the indian television and other forums social media etc the whole world is available to you but i am talking to you as a student of indian history and indian political system another thing that comes to my mind is swarsh chand bose appeared in indian civil service examination in 1920 and stood forth in the country in 1921 he was to appear for the final examination there a question was asked what is the foreign policy of british empire and he wrote divide and rule that is all divide people and rule over people this is swarsh chand bose 1921 he succeeded he did not join the indian civil service he instead opted for freedom movement and you know the ultimate destiny he arrived or touched his death remains a mystery till today despite a dozens of commissions and committees which have gone into it that is the kind of sacrifices last point i want to tell you is there is so much to tell actually that this uh, process of uh, becoming a free nation did not come all of a sudden it was a evolutionary process starting with there are other benchmarks but the most important benchmark being the 1919 regulating act under which most of the parties today who are enjoying power enjoyed power even at that time by getting elected for certain positions at the level of municipalities at the level of uh, what is called uh, corporations and at some state legislative assemblies they enjoyed power they started enjoying power from 1919 it is not from 1947 in 1935 although we teach the students that the constitution of india was introduced on 26 january 1950 they padhte hain na kitabon mein but the matter a fact is that the 90% of india's constitution as it exists today was designed by the british in 1935 regulating act reserve bank of india was set up in 1935 the union public service commission which was called federal public service commission was set up in 1936 your indian police your indian penal code ipc your crpc your cpc your indian evidence act and what madam ranika is teaching contract act was designed in 1872 are you with me the basic structure of our great country started evolving 
right after 1857 when Britishers removed East India Company and took command over India in their own hands. The entire constitutional evolution started happening thereafter. All these acts that I am telling, including contract acts, under which you write all agreements was designed in 1872. So friends, you should know not only what is told to you on Indian, what is called uh, television channels, etc, etc. You should have an in-depth understanding of how this day has arrived. Last point I want to mention is we must do everything to protect our freedom. To protect our sovereignty. Because uh, it is not easy to regain. Once lost, another 500 years will be gone. Unless some great man comes and again mobilizes you pulls you into a force. Therefore, each of us is responsible for ensuring sovereignty, integrity and togetherness, social togetherness of this country. I wish you once again a very happy Independence Day and hope that in years to come we will become more and more prosperous more and more confident, more and more stable politically, socially, and in terms of our comprehensive understanding. Thank you very much.